Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're going to look at the airport diagram section of an instrument approach chart. The airport diagram section is one of the most important sections on the chart, since it tells you almost everything you need to know about the airport. It includes its runway configuration, taxiway layout, lengths of the runways, services, lighting, etc. Almost everything there has some value as you come in to land. So let's get started. The first portion of the airport diagram is the airport elevation. Now the airport elevation will always be shown in feet MSL or above sea level. In this case, for Monterey, the elevation is 257 feet. Next to the airport elevation, if it's a precision approach, you'll have the touchdown zone elevation. Now the touchdown zone elevation is the specific elevation for the touchdown zone of the runway of intended landing. So in this case, it's the touchdown zone elevation for the touchdown zone for runway 10 right. Even though you can circle on this approach, it only gives you the touchdown zone elevation for 10 right since that's where the precision approach goes to. Next, you have the airport sketch. Now the airport sketch is a general overview of the airport, its runway configurations, and its general taxiway layout as well. Next, you have any lighting notes, in this case some runway lights, and whether they're pilot controlled or always on. And finally, if the approach involves time, you'll always have a timing section at the bottom, which tells you how long it'll take from the final approach fix to the missed approach point at various air speeds. Now let's talk about some specifics in these sections. First, when we look at the elevation and touchdown zone here at the top, we notice that in between them is a D. Now this D is referred to as negative symbology since it's a white letter on a black background. Finding the D in this location indicates that when looking at the airport facility directory, there may be some more detailed information regarding the runway dimensions than is listed on the chart. So let's get into the meat of this, the airport sketch. First thing you'll see in the airport sketch is the runway alignment. In this case, you have two parallel runways, runway 10 right, 28 left, and runway 10 left, 28 right. Accompanying each runway name is the dimensions of the runway. In this case, 10 left, 28 right is 3,513 feet long and 60 feet wide. Runway 10 right, 28 left is 7,616 feet long and 150 feet wide. Next, take a look at the different symbologies on the runways themselves. First, on runway 28 left, you'll notice this row of ovals interconnected. That indicates a displaced threshold on that runway. So runway 28 left, we don't know the exact distance down the runway, but we do know that it has a displaced threshold at the beginning of the runway. It's something that you'll have to look up in the airport facility directory, and is a major reason why you'll have this D symbology at the top. Next, we notice a V in a circle, which indicates that there's a VASI approach path indicator on that runway. The V will always be on the side of the runway that the VASI is located on. So as you make your approach, you can expect to see a VASI on the left side of runway 28 left. Now, as we look at runway 10 right, we see that there's an A5. An A5 indicates the type of approach lights that are on this runway. The little dot above the A5 indicates that there's sequenced flashers, or a rabbit, as part of the instrument approach lighting system. You can check the airport facility directory 
or the legend at the front of the procedure's publication to find out the abbreviations for all the different types of approach lighting systems. Now it's important to note one little difference here. You'll notice both symbols on runway 10 right are negative symbology. We have an A5 for approach lighting and a P for Pappy. Now the P is the same as the V that we had down on 28 left just indicates there's a PAPI approach path indicator on the left side of runway 10 right. But back to the negative symbology. If you see a normal symbol such as the V, this indicates that that lighting is on continuously. It's not pilot controlled, it's actually controlled at the tower itself. It's always on no matter what time you arrive at the airport. If the symbol is negative, as with the P and the A5 here on runway 10 right, that means that the lighting is pilot controlled. So that lighting has specific hours when it may be on. However, when the tower is closed, those lights are pilot controlled, so you'll have to control them using the CTAF frequency. In most cases, when you turn on any of the airport lights using the CTAF, all lights, such as the PAPI and the approach lighting system, will come on at the same time. Next, we see these numbers here of 1.3% up and 1.7% up. What this applies to is the slope of the runway. So runway 10 right has a 1.3% upslope, and runway 10 left has a 1.7% upslope. Outside of the runway environment, there are a few other symbols. The first one you'll see here is Tower 301. It's the location of the control tower and it's 301 feet tall. All of these altitudes are in MSL and are read off your barometric altimeter. In this case, since the rotating beacon is co-located with the tower, the symbol is a star. If the two were not co-located, you would see a tower symbol as a black box, and then you would see the star symbol somewhere else on the airport indicating the location of the rotating beacon. Next, we have a tower at 347 feet, and another at 210 feet located to the right side of the runway. There's also one more here at 240 feet, just off the approach end. Next, we have the arrow indicating the direction that the approach brings you in. This arrow is for all approaches that are designated straight in for a runway. In this case, that arrow is showing you that it's a 098 degree track and 4.3 nautical miles from the final approach fix to the runway. This is a great way to get yourself aligned and oriented with the runways when you're on the approach. There are some approaches that don't bring you in as straight as this one. Remember, for a straight in approach, it only needs to be aligned within 30 degrees of the runway center line. Therefore, you may see an arrow that looks something like this, which indicates that you will be coming at the airport from an oblique direction rather than straight on. Next, we have the lighting systems for the runways. Each runway with different lighting is listed. In this case, there's medium intensity runway lighting on runway 10 left to 8 right, high intensity runway lighting on runway 10 right to 8 left, and runway end identifier lights on runway 28 left. As with the negative symbology above, the two negative L's indicate that those lights are pilot controlled. Finally, we have the missed approach timing section. Any approach that has a time designated with it will have the timing section below the airport sketch. In this case, the timing is related to the localizer approach, not the ILS approach. The distance from the final approach fix to the missed approach point is always given. However, this distance cannot be used to determine the missed approach point. 
In the case of timed approaches, only time can be used legally to determine the missed approach point. Below the distance is a chart showing various speeds and times to arrive at the missed approach point from the final approach fix. So, if you're flying the approach at 60 knots, it will take you 3 minutes and 48 seconds to reach the missed approach point. If you're flying the approach at 150 knots, it'll take you 1 minute and 31 seconds. While it's unlikely that you would fly the approach at one of these airspeeds exactly, it's a good indication to allow you to interpolate what time you need to arrive at the missed approach point. Also keep in mind that all of these times are based on a ground speed. So at 90 knots ground speed, it will take you 2 minutes and 32 seconds to get to the missed approach point. So when you're flying the approach, make sure you pay special attention to the winds and what your actual ground speed may be in order to accurately determine the time. Now let's take a look at a slightly more complicated airport diagram. This is the airport diagram for Las Vegas McCarran International Airport. As you can see, there's quite a bit more going on around the runways than we saw in Monterey. The layout, however, is still the same. We still have the airport elevation and touchdown zone elevations at the top, the negative D symbology, the airport sketch, the lighting information, and the time information for the approach. One of the first important things to note is none of the lighting systems are pilot controlled. All of the lighting operates continuously or is controlled by the tower. Next, look at the final approach arrow. You can see it's not quite lined up with either one of the runways. This is a good example of when you may be looking at the airport at a different angle than straight down the runway. We can also see in this sketch that the tower is not co-located with the rotating beacon. The black square indicates where the tower is, and the star indicates where the rotating beacon is. This tower is 2,308 feet above sea level. Next, we can also see that there's a VOR depicted on the field. The VOR symbology is the same as the VOR symbology on any other instrument chart. Another difference? Runways are listed with both up and down slopes, so you get a better feel for how the aircraft will stop on the runway. This is a little more critical for larger aircraft with faster speeds. However, it'll give you a feel for how the airport should look on the approach. Finally, let's take a look at the airport sketch for John Wayne International Airport in Orange County. There are just a few more symbols that we haven't seen yet. The first is the heliport symbol. As you can see, there are quite a few helicopter landing pads located at John Wayne. Each one of the H's indicates where a helicopter landing pad is located. If you're taxiing around these areas, make sure you use caution. Next, we have a closed taxiway. A closed taxiway or closed runway will be indicated by a series of X's through that particular segment. If it makes it onto the airport sketch, it's a good bet that that taxiway or runway has been closed for a while and is definitely not in use. Finally, there's a little pitfall to be wary of. Due to the close proximity of the runways here at John Wayne, there are two pappies located right in line with each other. One of them for runway 19 right and the other for runway 19 left. Notice how the pappy for 19 right is actually located in between the two runways. This is when it's very important to pay attention to where the markings for your particular runway are. If you're making the approach to 19 left, you need to know that the pappy on the left is the pappy for that runway whereas the pappy that you would see to the right of the runway is actually for the parallel runway. One other thing, because there's no displaced threshold, 
there's no need to go reference different runway lengths in the airport facility directory. In this case, we can see that the runway is 5,701 feet long, and since there's no displaced threshold, that is the actual length of the runway. Now that's it for this description of the airport sketch on an instrument approach chart. Now there are many different symbols that you're going to see in an airport sketch, and the only way to cover them all is to go back and look through the legend at the front of the terminal procedures. There's no way to cover every single symbol that you may see on a sketch. So remember to stay vigilant and look up anything that looks a little weird. It may be something very important to know for that approach. Thanks again, and I look forward to seeing you again in another KL Aviation lesson.